Hi, this is Susan from Susan B. Cards. Today I'm going to be using this um, Spellbinders 3D Embossing Folder of the Month. And this one is from September 2024. As you can see, it is, hopefully you can see, that it's um, a scene of pumpkins and some mums. And it's, it's a beautiful folder. So I made the mistake earlier when I was filming this of not uh, turning my camera on the right way for YouTube. So I have to refilm this, but luckily I have a sample of what I'm going to make today. This is acetate that I embossed with this 3D embossing folder. And then I flip the acetate over. So the raised, the raised side is the front and I flipped it over to the back and um, you know, where the pumpkins were, it kind of is, is sunken in. Um, and I put alcohol ink, different colors. I put alcohol ink and used up alcohol, rubbing alcohol and the blending tool and just move the alcohol ink around. And I use a lot of fall colors here and I'll show you which ones I'm gonna use later. So it leaves this real pretty effect, but then I, I did one more step after that because some of the areas of the alcohol ink, uh, if you've ever used it, you'll see that some areas uh, can be thick and some can be thin. And when you do it on acetate, since you can see right through it, some of the areas didn't look as good as others. You know, maybe there were like splotches that were missing alcohol ink. And rather than spending all day trying to fill in all those areas, which you could if you wanted to use maybe a paintbrush I didn't really want to do that. So I just spread the alcohol ink around randomly and then um, I'll show you what I did later to fill in those areas. But you should also know that if you mount it on um, colored paper, those areas will appear darker as well. So let me go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this piece of pretty thin acetate. Um, this one is cut to six and a half by five and a half. And it's just a scrap of acetate that I had. I'll show you the pad that I used. I used this one and it's by We Are Memory Keepers. I bought this years ago at Michael's and I don't really see it available in a lot of places. Um, you could probably find it on Amazon or Google it and it goes by either uh, We Are Memory Keepers or American Crafts. I saw on other sites too, like scrapbook.com and Simon Says Stamp, they sell acetate. So you can go ahead and buy that. That works too. I'll show you the cards that um, I made a few weeks ago. And um, I have a tutorial on my channel that shows how I did that. These are the uh, Simon Says Stamp acetate cards. So um, what I did was I embossed the acetate with an embossing folder, and then I painted the backside with gold acrylic paint. And that took a while because I had to paint all these little areas with a small paintbrush. And then I took an ink blended panel and I put that behind the acetate. So that's what you can see. Here you can see it a little bit better. That's on my channel if you want to find out how I did that. So this is a little bit different because I'm going to use alcohol ink. And maybe you already know that you can use alcohol ink on acetate. Um, you can use it on gloss, uh, some glossy card stocks and uh, Yupo paper. That's what I've done mostly. But I kind of like this effect of using it on acetate um, because I can add the colors I want. Also, I wanted to do it from the back. That way the alcohol ink, you know, wouldn't scratch off the card. So I'm gonna go ahead, emboss this. And this is just um, a regular sandwich that you use for your machine, just as you would do for paper. It's no different. Okay, I ran the acetate through, and hopefully you can see how the image is now embossed on this acetate. So I have this um, small medicine dropper that I just got from the pharmacy at Target 
or you know any any pharmacy even at the grocery store and they're, they're pretty cheap so I bought that and I just use regular isopropyl alcohol and that's also something you can find at most grocery stores or pharmacies you don't want to put too much if you don't want your alcohol hauling to be thin um, and also you have to be careful because alcohol ink will stain your clothes it'll stain a lot of other surfaces you can do this on glass and easily clean it up but I like to do it in a box and then you want to do this in a well ventilated area as well right now I have the window open and a fan going so I like to start with yellow this is sunshine yellow um, because it's a little bit lighter of a color and what I found is um, the dark colors, like with anything, will overtake um, the entire image. So I don't want to put too much dark down at the beginning, but kind of almost use this as a, a little bit of a base. So you can use this blending tool. This is from Ranger Tim Holtz, or you can just kind of lift it up. Uh, another hint that I'll give you is if you get a lot of alcohol ink, like I have on my hands, you can use the um, rubbing alcohol and a towel to get that off. Um, and I've also found that nail polish remover works really well in the real stubborn areas. But again, it'll take off your nail polish as well. So just be aware of that. So that was a, a darker yellow that I used. It's called Dijon. So just like its name, it's, it's a little bit mustardy. This one is lettuce. This is one of my favorite greens. Um, the previous one that I made, um, I used some very dark green and it was like a pine color and that didn't look as good on the um, background. It just, it looked a little bit too uh, green and it stood out a little bit more than I wanted to. But that's the nice thing about alcohol. You can uh, just move it around and you know lightening up with different colors and it's fine so what I'm doing here is just moving the alcohol ink in some of these areas I want to cover most of this acetate and then you can also pick it up and kind of move it around but I'm not going to worry if there are areas that end up getting missed because um, the last step of what I do to this will cover a lot of that mess or it'll cover not the mess but it'll cover things that I've missed is a better way of putting it so this is a pretty color this one is terracotta which is kind of nice for fall especially when I'm working on pumpkins and some pretty dark colors now this is espresso, which is a very dark brown. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of this. I did kind of like it against some of the lighter colors. And then if you kind of move it, it'll go into some of those crevices and kind of outline what you're doing. Valencia. I have so many colors. I saw that um, Tim Holtz came out with some new ones and I haven't even purchased any of those because I have so many colors already. I, I used to do a lot of um, work with alcohol ink and I haven't really done as much. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to use up some of these inks. And it's gonna mix with all the colors and you're gonna create some browns probably if you use greens and reds together and orange but that's okay too it ends up looking just really good I think it's not hard to do you know if you wanted to you could go in with a paintbrush and apply some but I don't feel like that's necessary you can see I just love the edge here but I made the paper or the acetate larger than I really need to because I like cutting it down. If you start with exactly the size you need, if the edges don't look so good, then you're kind of stuck. And this way I make it a little bit bigger and then I just cut 
off whatever areas I don't like. So it's a little bit hard to see, but that's where I am right now. I need a little bit more dark colors, I think, in there. Maybe a little bit less of the oranges. So I'm gonna keep working, adding some colors, and um, I'll be back. Hopefully it's not as uh, orange as it looks when I'm done with it. Just add a little bit of brown here. Oh, here's a color moss, and I have limeade. I don't know if this is going to be too bright, but eh, I'll try it. It'll mix up with other things, and it'll be fine. This moss is kind of cool. Looks almost like a grayish green. This isn't completely dry, but it's it's not bad. I hope you can see all the different colors that are in there. I'll put it against this uh, scrap piece of white paper. And you can kind of see. You can see how the orange really overtook a lot of the areas. Um, if I did it again, I might not use quite so much orange or, or red. But I can still go back in and, and maybe put some dark colors here because I kind of like the way this looks. I like the way this looks right here. So I can still add alcohol and can have it move around. And because it's translucent, you can still see through the alcohol ink a bit. Which leads me to the last step of what I do. I'm going to use some um, acrylic paint and rub it on the back, really blot it in the back just to fill in some of the areas. Um, and like here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's no alcohol ink here. And rather than keep going around and over it, I'm going to um, just fill it in because you can still see my hand through it. So anything that I put it, I put behind it will kind of show through. So this is the uh, next step that I like to do. Um, I like to fill in some of the missing areas with acrylic paint. So for this one, I use this same bottle I've been using for uh, probably over a year. And this is just metallic paint, craft paint from Hobby Lobby. It was probably less than $2. I, I use it a lot. Now, um, so what I did was I just took a paper towel, I put some of the acrylic paint on it, and then I just kind of blotted it, kind of using it like almost like a sponge, and just filling in the back. And then it gives you this effect on the front, which is what I did here. On this one, um, I did do gold, and then I filled in a little bit with black. And it gives a little bit of a, a darker cast. I think on this one, I probably had a few more areas of, of um, just dots where it wasn't filled in. And you can see that the black kind of filled in those spots. The gold filled it in as well. Don't worry if your alcohol ink doesn't completely um, cover the acetate. If you have a couple of areas, you can always fill that in with gold paint or black paint on the back. So you can see that the, the um, alcohol ink is pretty much covered everywhere. So I'm going to just try using black this time because for this one I just use gold. So again this is the back. This is the front. And uh, this is the back where the, the alcohol ink is sitting. And it is sticky so that would be another reason you don't really want to put that alcohol ink on the front. I put a little bit more black than I really wanted to, so I just use a little bit of a, a wet paper towel because until the until the acrylic paint completely dries, it'll 
come off of it. So I put way too much on there. So use a thinner coat. You could always add more later. So. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to put some of this gold paint on. I think the black was just a little bit dark. But it was an experiment. I got to see what it looked like. This um, alcohol ink on the back is really sticky. My fingers are sticking to it. So again, just spread it out, dab it a bit. So here's what it looks like. Here's the one that's all gold on the back. I think I kind of like the all gold one better. Kind of gives a pretty metallic finish. But this one is pretty too. Just a little bit darker. The last thing I want to show you what I do is um, how I adhere this to the paper. Now since this is acetate, it's a little bit harder to glue this to a piece of cardstock. So I have this Sizzix um, adhesive sheet and I cut it down about an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around um, just so that I, I didn't have any problems, you know, putting this on and then ending up having some of it, some of the glue hang over. I didn't want that. So um, I just cut it just a smidge smaller Let's peel here. Okay. So this is actually uh, the piece of that gets thrown out, and this is the adhesive. I know some people like to put part of it down and pull the the backing off, but I just like to place the whole thing down at one time. Now, because this is um, embossed and it's not completely smooth, the glue doesn't, or the adhesive sheet doesn't get into every area. Um, I just like to use my finger and kind of press it down. So then um, you're going to have some of these edges here where there's no adhesive stuck to it. So if you want to cut it exactly the same size, you could do that. But what I end up doing is going back with um, Distress Collage Medium. And I just put a little bit of my finger and I'll put it around some of these edges that are sticking up. And I'll do that later. Now I'm gonna pull off this backing. See, if you can see, some of that is not sticking because it's so lumpy from the embossing. And you know, that's just the way it goes. I like to take this and just immediately throw this out so I don't end up getting it stuck on something else. Just throwing that in my garbage. And then I go and I put this, I cut this just a quarter inch larger than my um, acetate. I'm just carefully putting this down. The other thing you can do too is cut it bigger and then trim it at the end and then you wouldn't have a wonky border like I have right here. But that's okay. So um, that's pretty much what I do. And if I have a few areas it doesn't look too bad. I would just take a little bit of this collage medium. You use a brush. You could use your finger. And then I'm gonna put a book on top of that, something heavy on top of it, just so that it gives it time to um, stick together. So that's it. That's my uh, background and I'll go ahead and make some cards from this and I'll show those at the end of this video.
So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I'll put the products I use in the description below, or you can look on my blog at susanbcards.blogspot.com and I'll list everything there. I'm also on Instagram at susanbcards, so you can follow me there where I post a lot more than I post here. So thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.